Oh boy. What the hell? First half of the ride was fun. Second half, horrible. Fast lane when I pass in the street, bag of money in the passenger seat. Simple's been asking for me on the road from the west to the east. Way up, I might never come down, cause the coast racking up the flight miles. So high, I might never come down, so what? This is my lifestyle. Wait a minute. Hey guys, here at our Airbnb, Airbnb in Vermont in uh, preparation for the Vermont Grand Fondo that we're doing tomorrow. The event is in Bristol and we're staying in Lincoln, which is about 10 minutes away from there. And it's a, a very nice place we found here and nice and comfortable, has everything we need and uh, was Kind of a long drive here earlier today, at least four and a half hours from Connecticut to here. Um, but we took turns driving and as soon as we got here, Joy made us a nice dinner of shrimp scampi with linguine. So a nice uh, carb load meal uh, pre-race and uh, feeling pretty good. Got back into training the last uh, couple of weeks and totally pain-free now with the the hip injury and the hip injury that I had from the the Mine Hill crash and you know the same injury that I made worse by doing the the Highlands Fondo. Um, finally recovered from all that. The one thing that does concern me a little bit about tomorrow is it, it, it's going to be a long day. Um, 80 miles, I think on paper it's 5,000 something feet of climbing. It'll probably be more than that when all said and done. Uh, but 80 miles, so it's probably gonna take us at least five hours to do that ride. And that's the one thing that I haven't been able to do in training the last couple of weeks is doing really long rides. Um, last week I did start to build up the volume again and did a uh, about a two hour, almost two hour ride on Saturday and almost three hours on Sunday. So starting to get a little bit of a uh, little bit of volume back, but I haven't done any rides that are more than three hours in um, probably months. Uh, so it'll be, uh, I'm sure that some fatigue will set in by the end of the day tomorrow. The couple who owns this place, I think they made muffins for us and it was so good. I couldn't finish the whole thing though, but, um, it was so good. And weather here is, is, is pretty nice. We don't need, we have the windows open and we get nice fresh air from outside, but unfortunately it's not going to stay that way because tomorrow I think supposedly it's going to, there's a chance that it will rain. And I just checked Epic Ride weather and it looks like, um, it starts the, what the rain is going to come until around three or four, the latest five o'clock is when the, uh, percentage goes up. So. I think we'll be fine tomorrow. It'll just be cloudy here and there. Um, there's some, I think their sun will be peeking out, peeking through once in a while, but it will be mostly cloudy, um, especially at the, towards the end. So we'll see um, how we do. We're doing the 80 mile route, which is the, which is the medial route. They have four distances and the longest is, 150 miles with 15,000 feet and it goes up six gaps and which is like six mountain climbs, which we're not doing. We're only doing two of the six gaps here. So yeah, we'll see how we do. Um, we'll see how my legs feel tomorrow. I'll just let my legs dictate what to do. And I think I'm, I, I have some idea of how to pace my efforts now that I've done prior to this event, 
Um, we've done a couple of threshold intervals, threshold workouts. So I have some idea of how to, to pace it between high point, high lens, um, and a couple of other workouts that I've done. I think I have some idea of how to pace these two climbs. Kind of, you know, pretty excited. I am looking forward to it because we've actually have talked about doing the Vermont Fondo for a number of years. And that was actually the first, this would be the first event that, this is the first event that we trained for before the pandemic hit. Um, so yeah, we've been, we, it's been percolating in our minds for a number of years. And uh, this year just happens to be the year that we decided to do some fondos. So we'll see what the legs do tomorrow. Um, we've carb loaded today. Um, <laughs> lots of frosted flakes, pasta, all the bad stuff. Oh yeah, I had Tostitos in the car with salsa. Yeah, that was so good. Vermont is located in the northeastern United States and known for its picturesque landscapes, quaint small towns, and outdoor recreational activities. It is also home to the Green Mountains with six mountain gaps that includes the famous Lincoln Gap, which boasts America's steepest paved mile. had an unpleasant surprise when we looked out the window of our Airbnb and saw that it was raining. All right. I know some people have been asking about the weather forecast had been for rain starting in the mid-afternoon, but apparently the rain moved forward by a few hours and it was already starting to drizzle first thing in the morning. I was glad that I decided to pack my rain jacket on this trip. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you. The Middlebury Gap is a two-mile segment and the Brandon Gap is a little over three miles. Even though the segments are short, the climbs themselves are over five to nine miles long. So let's see how we both do. As beautiful as Vermont is, unfortunately, we felt like we really didn't get to take in the views as it was gloomy and rainy start, which put a damper on things. I'm not a fan of riding in the rain, as I'm sure most people aren't, but at least it wasn't too cold. I was confident that my rain jacket would keep me warm enough, so I was in an optimistic mood and ready to take on the challenge. I would just have to deal with being wet. We started the ride amongst a group that was riding at a moderate pace which we could keep up with comfortably. We stayed with the group until the first gravel section where things started getting strung out. I wore a vest and arm sleeves to keep my core temperature warm but it didn't do much to keep me dry.
Eventually, we hit the first seven-mile gravel sector with a short, punchy climb and a long descent. The descent was brutal, though, because I began to feel cold, and to top it off, I was being pelted by rain and mud. The climb warmed me up and prompted me to take off my rain jacket, only to stop and put it back on shortly after starting the descent as I started to freeze. I need to put my rain jacket back on, I'm freezing. Yeah. I'm like... I'm debating on whether to put mine on or... I, I have to... I have to put it on because I'm like, I'm like hypothermic almost right now. I decided from that point on I would likely keep the rain jacket on because I would need it on all the descents. Finally, we hit the Middlebury Gap. It's two miles, 6.3% average grade, but the last mile is the steepest, averaging at 8.7%, so I knew going into this to save my legs for that last mile. My plan was to do threshold on the first mile and go above threshold on the second mile. I spun at a cadence around 90 RPM on the moderate grades to save my legs for the steeper section. It's really easy to go hard right off the bat on a short segment, but pacing is still key. One of the screens on my Wahoo has the elevation profile in color, with my three second average power, lap distance, and lap time. So once in a while I'll look down to check how many miles I've ridden to determine how many more miles I have left to go. This is really helpful for pacing. Average 249 watts on the first mile and 257 watts on the second mile. 257 is at the upper end of my threshold and I was going into zone 5 on any double digit grades. Okay, thanks. How's the bike? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the more important thing. Uh, must have some, uh, couldn't, I couldn't unclip. Yeah, Are you good? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, it's happened to every one of those. Nice one. Thanks. My average power for the whole segment was 255 watts with a time of 14 minutes and 38 seconds and average speed of 8 miles per hour. I think that under warmer, drier conditions, I could have done better, but given the weather we were dealt, I was satisfied with my effort. 
I normally don't perform as well when it's chilly and I feel cold, and I certainly could have done worse. <sighs> <clears throat> Unlike previous times, either during training or racing, my legs felt phenomenal, but today my legs felt flat. I don't know if it was because the muscles got cold in the descents or what, but I didn't have quite the same exact feeling. I guess I can't always have great legs. Clip. Twelve percent. Oh, dear, it's going to be cold. Well, at least it stopped raining. Oh my gosh. We again descended, shivering down to our bones and headed over to the Brandon Gap, our last and final segment. Thankfully, there aren't any major climbs in between the two gaps, so it was an easy spin. We had about 17 miles of easy riding in the valley between the first and second segment. The rain was intermittent and there were moments when it stopped or eased up enough where we could enjoy the quiet, scenic roads. The second segment started 39 miles into the ride, which was about the halfway point. I was glad that both segments were in the first half of the ride while my legs were still relatively fresh. Having not done any long endurance rides in a couple of months, I was a little concerned about how my legs would hold up for 80 miles. Oh crap. We almost missed the start of the second the segment hell? because the banner Can was missing. But luckily Jason noticed the timing box just as noticed. we rode past it. The Brandon Gap is 3.4 miles, 4.8% average grade. So definitely not as steep as the first segment, but longer, which means I would have to pace my effort again. Since the Brandon Gap was a more gradual climb without any steep sections, my strategy for it was simply to ride at upper threshold for most of it and possibly push harder at the end if I had anything left. I settled into a steady rhythm and held it throughout the climb. About three miles into the effort, I was feeling the lactate build up, but it was manageable.
tried to push into zone 5 but could barely do it, so that tells me that I paced myself well and probably couldn't have gone that much faster than I did under the conditions. I finished the segment with a time of 19 minutes and 47 seconds, averaging 256 watts and 10.5 miles per hour. <sighs> When I got closer to the top, the wind picked up. According to Epic Ride Weather, we had a crosswind up both gaps, but at times it felt like a headwind as I felt like I was grinding with every pedal stroke. My Wahoo screen read 3.2 miles, but I still couldn't see the finish line. There was a photographer stationed close to the top, and as he snapped a picture of me, I asked with labored breaths how far it was to the top. Where's the finish line? You got it. Where's the finish line? Uh, top, maybe you're... Okay. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Oh. 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 That was hard. It was. Before we descended, I put my gloves and vest back on to prepare for the descent. I was surprised at how gradual this descent was, not as steep as Middlebury descent. It allowed me to take my hands off the brakes for a bit and go faster. The quicker I ride down, the sooner I get to the bottom where I hoped the temperature would be milder. Yeah, so wound up getting a puncture on one of the gravel sections and I should have just left it alone because I think it would have sealed it. I tried plugging it and it made it worse. We're 20 miles to the finish line, so, and it's mostly flat for some rollers trying to get the legs back up and running again. When we got to the last aid station, we had 20 miles left to ride, but we got held up because somewhere along the way, I got a puncture. I tried plugging it, but it made it worse. So eventually I had to put a tube in. This would have been an easy fix, but the lock ring to my tubeless valve would not loosen due to the dirt I picked up riding through the gravel sectors. Thankfully, there was an awesome volunteer who helped me remove the lock ring and sent me on my way. When we got back on the bike riding again, the rain picked up. Jason volunteered to pull at the front while I got pelted by rain. After this, so hopefully that's it.
On top of the rain, we also had wind gusts to contend with, and I was shivering to the point where I felt like I was losing control of the bike. I told Joy I was going to ride at tempo to try to generate some body heat. It worked. Almost in Bristol, one mile to Bristol. Right turn coming up. Crossing the finish line brought a feeling of accomplishment. We pushed through 80 miles under some of the toughest conditions that we've ridden in. We didn't give up. We managed some solid efforts on the Middlebury and Brandon Gap segments, and we finished the ride strong as the oh, weather was you. at its worst. Thanks. As for the segment race, I ended up taking second place out of 14 in the men's 35 to 44 age group and eighth place out of 92 overall for the Meteo route. I was thrilled with that result. It's beyond what I expected and it's my best result in a segment race by far. I was 56 seconds behind the winner in total time for both segments. Apologies for the uh, dirty, I know, don't worry. <laughs> the, the, the dirty bands here. Thank you, here. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was 56 seconds behind the winner in my age group in total time for both segments. If I had known I was that close out on the course, I might have been able to squeeze out a few more watts, but I'm not sure if I would have been able to shave off that much time. Lesson learned that you never really know when you're in contention on a segment race or time trial where you're not riding with your competitors. So always give it the best effort that you have on that day. Backdrop. All in all, I have to say the Vermont Grand Fondo was a good experience despite the bad weather. The event itself was well organized and the route and the roads were great. While we were riding, we weren't able to take in all of the scenery because of poor visibility from the rain. But when we drove back to Connecticut the day after, traveling on some of the same roads we rode our bikes on, we were amazed by the views of the mountains in the background. We imagined how enjoyable it would be to ride those roads on a warm, sunny day. 
We hope to answer that question in the not too distant future, as we definitely want to ride the Vermont Grand Fondo again. Thanks for watching our videos. If you enjoyed them, please like and consider subscribing to our channel. Until next time, enjoy your rides.